Welcome to Our Generation with Melissa Shaw, where we educate, empower, and inspire. And I'm super excited about my guest today. I actually had the privilege of being on her show a couple of weeks ago, which was so dope. I so thank you for that. Like, I've never had an opportunity just to really talk about what I do, you know, and have those guided questions. So it was really a great experience. It was dope. Thank you. Thank you for being on as well. Yeah, yeah so I can enjoyed you it. Tell my listeners your name and a little bit about yourself. Uh, my name is Lavinia Richards. I am from originally from Gary, Indiana, and I moved to Indianapolis in 1994. Um, I've been here since then, come from very humble beginnings, been a mother since 13 years old. Um, went through domestic violence, uh, came to Indianapolis leaving a domestic situation, been here ever since, and just leveled up a lot of been a runaway since i was uh 14 never went back home um two marriages two divorces so a lot that's a little bit about me four kids 13 grandchildren and okay. uh, one great grandbaby and another grandbaby on the way oh so. that's exciting i know um so uh what do you do so obviously a podcast because <laughs> i was on it but you know what kind of made you get into that and i know you have other things that you do yeah, so I started with the uh, podcasting. I mean, I do a plethora of things, first of all, um, but what's really near and dear to my heart um, is my newest baby, which is Verbal Mirrors Reflecting Understanding Podcast. And um, I got into that because of my life, you know, because I, um, I'm from those humble beginnings. I knew what domestic violence felt like. I knew what being a runaway felt like. I knew what being a teen mother felt like. And I just feel like um, there are so many things that are not discussed. You know, we talked about that when we met, like the taboo things, mm -hmm. you know, the things, you know, the molestation. I experienced that, you know, and all of the things. And so I wanted people to have the platform to be able to discuss those things without being judged, mm -hmm. but understanding that we are verbal mirrors. And so that is us reflecting one another. But we don't always understand. Mm -hmm. You know, we look at each other so quick to judge and to say, oh, no, you know, but if you get to know the person, maybe you'll understand why they do what they do. So that's one of the things that I do. Um, I am also a travel business owner. And so I am able to, yes, book and sell travel for myself. However, I am also able to help empower other people to do the same. So um, I have that. And then I have my non -for Well, it is a for-profit. It is for-profit. Um, I can and I will Women's Empowerment LLC. And that is to do just what it sounds like to empower women that you can and you will. And so that's how I got into it, just from experience. Yeah, so. I love that. Isn't it um, interesting how everything that we tend to do is always out of a need mm -hmm. that either we personally experienced or that we've seen? Absolutely. That it's helped create a business. Mm -hmm. Out of all of them, what's your favorite? Ah, that's hard. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that's so hard. Because everything that I do helps people. Yeah. And so that's my biggest thing now. You know, I no longer, I worked in the medical field for years because I did what I had to do. Mm -hmm. And it was easy for me to be that CNA and provide for my daughters and, you know, at the time. But um, I think right now in this season of my life, let me say that, mm -hmm. right now in this season of my life, I think the podcast, because it gives. I knew you was going to say yeah, that. That's because, the only reason why I asked. <laughs> People a voice, yeah, you know? Yeah. And I think people need that, you know? Absolutely. So, yeah. So yeah. how long have you been doing your podcast? So I just recently started my podcast. I'm so excited. I actually launched my podcast on February 22nd of this year. Um, had it in my mind, just kind of was, you know how you hesitate a bit because oh, you, yeah. you're scared. Yeah. And, um, scared of what? <laughs> right. Nothing. Because I'm a soldier, right? Right, right. But um, no, like I just was like, you know, I know I have a voice. I know I have something to say. And guess what? I'm not the only one, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so, yeah, I've been doing this since February, but been speaking for a long time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. What do you enjoy about speaking? Um, motivation, empowerment, encouraging into me, whether it's male or female, mm -hmm. uh, just knowing that I can say a word or may have an experience or something uplifting that I can say and say, hey, um, you'll be okay. Mm -hmm. You know, it's okay. And not just from just saying it, oh, you'll be okay. You mm -hmm. know, just making you feel better. Just knowing that my struggles, you'll be okay mm -hmm. if you don't quit, of course. Yeah. So, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and what are some, uh, 
things that you're wanting to do. I know we had talked previously, um, you had talked about like the young people. Mm -hmm. So what are some things that you're wanting to try to, to do with them? Well, one of my biggest things is that I feel like, um, you know, we grew up, we had arts and crafts, we had all of the things in school. Well, they started taking the community centers out of the communities, you know, mm -hmm. the recreational centers, the arts and crafts, all of the things that help kids, exp you know, express themselves. And um, like I was telling you, they, they end up being angry adults or stressed out adults because they never had the opportunity. So I want them to have a platform. Mm -hmm. um, what I enjoy talking about, talking with you on, um, they want to be seen. Mm -hmm. And so I want young adults, young, even, you know, children. Like I said, I have 13 grandchildren. They're coming up and they're going to, mm -hmm. you know, be our doctors, attorneys, like I said. And so I want to make sure that they have a platform to be able to express themselves, connect them with people like you who are empowering them to step into their niche or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, so that they can grow and develop in business or whatever that looks like. So mm -hmm. connections, kind of like what you were saying, you know? Yeah, connections are huge. Um, yeah. I connected with a gentleman today that has a STEAM program. Um, and they really, it's similar to the STEM. Mm -hmm. um, and what they do for young people is amazing. And it's mm -hmm. like, there's so many of us out here, but we're so unconnected. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so one of the things that I really want to try to do is just really provide that space and, you know, connections with people, yeah. whether we personally connect, but if you can be in an environment where you connect with somebody else like that, absolutely, it's so important. Yeah, I mean, relationships are important. And I think we don't value them, you know, um, because we take them for granted. Mm -hmm. But especially, and, and I love friendships and all of that, but professional relationships matter. Oh, absolutely. You know, they just really do. Being connected with the right people that can help empower you as well as others. You know, you want to be connected with the right people. So Definitely. Um, it's important to have those connections. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so much so. Um, and even to go further with that, um, with the connections is, you know, being able to put them in rooms where they wouldn't normally have the opportunity to be in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and like, I think now that I'm in this arena, just to be able to connect with people, you don't know what you don't know. Like, this is my first time here, you know? Mm -hmm. And so um, just knowing that th there is a center like this that you can come to or, or, you know, that I had no knowledge about, and that's mm -hmm. the problem. And so when people are asking, what do I do with my daughter? or What do mm -hmm. I do with my son? Now those connections, you can put them in the right room. So mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, mm -hmm. even um, as far as even going into the schools and offering, you know, what we have, because they can only do so much. Right. And we talked about a village mm -hmm. that you don't see that anymore. No, because everybody's like, don't talk to my baby. You know, you don't tell my. And yeah. I get it because the world is a lot different from when we mm -hmm. were growing up. You know, they have children um, have a lot more access to things that we didn't. You know, we talked about we had mm -hmm. to go to the library. We had to go and, you know, get the encyclopedias and really write the paper. Mm -hmm. Right. We couldn't just say um, Siri, you know, right. or so, chat GPT. Yeah, you know, make this me. paper for yeah. me, you know. So at the end of the day, it's just kind of like, um, you know, I want children and adults to have substance. Mm -hmm. I think that's what's missing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a lot of facades, a lot of fictitious things because people have to hide behind walls because they can't speak up mm -hmm. and, or they can't or don't have access to certain things. And so, um, you know, just trying to make sure that I'm a part of mm -hmm. making it better instead of just talking about it. No, absolutely. And, you know, about relationship building, um, relationship building is huge. I remember when I worked at... Um, it was New York and Company, mm -hmm. and my district manager had said um, he gave me a book, Skills Finder, mm -hmm. to look at because I was struggling with my my uh, store manager. And when I read that, and it's like a test on there where they kind of your personality or whatever, and mm -hmm. um, it showed that I'm a relationship builder. Okay, and it made sense why yeah. I struggle with certain personalities because mm -hmm. I want everyone to get along I want everyone to everyone has a space everyone right. has a voice and you know there are spaces in the world for people like me that's right and there are spaces for people that need to be more operational right you know and so really understanding um it's almost like even like love language like even me and my friend was talking about this 
um, even as friends, mm -hmm. you need to know what that love language language is and yeah. how you can build that relationship with that person because what you might think they want or need mm -hmm. may not even be what that is. And so you're continually doing something that they don't and they're want. not they're not responding to yeah. it. And then you get upset because you're like, oh, I did this and they didn't even, well, maybe that's not even... Their love language, yeah. yeah. And I had to learn that. I love uh, the five love, love languages too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, because... Again, verbal mirrors, mm -hmm. reflecting understanding, like, are we understanding one another? You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And so um, in dealing with people, we can want to force our, our ideologies on other people, like you said. So I'm seeing that this is what you need, but they're thinking, no, I'm so far from that, so far from removed. And then you wonder why you don't have the progress because you're trying to force something on them that they don't want. Absolutely. So let them have a voice, let them speak, and then meet them in the middle, mm -hmm. like we talked about, mm -hmm. and then help propel them to their greatness and not what you see for them. So. No, and that, that's to that point is, you know, older ones, that's why there's that disconnect with younger, the younger generation, mm -hmm. because they look at this younger generation as, I don't even know what they, I mean, like, <laughs> Or what? How are they looking? I don't even know, but they don't. The younger ones don't feel comfortable with the mm -hmm. older ones. They feel like the older ones look at them as um, not important, right? And it's because it's so different, like from how you know grew up. You're mm -hmm. seen and not heard. You don't have grown people's business, you know. Yeah. And so they still try to carry that same. And it's on, so and out there. You cannot, like, you're, there's no way that these kids are going to respond to that. And all it's going to do is piss them off. Yeah. And they're going to go the other direction. I agree. And they're not going to listen to anything that you say. But and I had to learn that. With, everything. Yeah. And that too. Yeah. So being, you know, my daughter taught me a lot because I gave her a voice. Mm hmm And it was very triggering for me. Mm hmm And I say that a lot because she has no problem saying how she feels feel, exactly yeah and I was like oh wow like I'm being I'm allowing you to be what I didn't have right and because it's important though it is. and it hurts and it's ugly and it's messy and oh. it's not you know but that's what it is that's yeah. all a part of like if if I didn't let her be able to express herself then how am I going to help her right because if she ex if she responds a certain way to a situation I need to see that rawness mm -hmm. so that I can kind of come in and mold like, okay, well, maybe we, you know, look at it from this standpoint. Right. But if I, we never experienced that, I would have never been able to given that opportunity. Right. Growing up, we could not develop those at skills. All. Go sit down. What did I say? Right. Right. And it could have been something like, to us, extremely important. Extremely, right. But we was just taught that it, what you think doesn't matter. Mm -mm. You're not important. You're right. a child. Right, that children so. are not important, and I never want you know your children to feel like you know, that. And I, I mean, there was times when uh, you revert back, and you do. Yeah, you, you know, do it. it's hard to unlearn. Yes. We say I'm not gonna be like my parents, and <laughs> you end up exactly listen. And but there were some things, and that's what I tell people. Like for me, coming from an abusive relation, I mean, abusive household, um, and then experiencing domestic violence myself. Um, I don't know. I had a lot of unresolved issues still raising my children. I mean, because again, I was a mother at 13. I didn't know how to be mm. a mom, but I know there were a lot of things. And not to judge my mother, I told you, you know, they did, my parents did, I guess, the best whatever they felt like they can do. Mm -hmm. However, there were plenty of things. Instead of me judging them, I just looked and I said, you know what? I'm not going to do that with my kids. And I didn't mm. because it was so um, hurtful for me. I wanted to make sure that I didn't leave that impression or imprint on my children, mm -hmm. right? Um, I might have gone too far because I was overprotective, mm -hmm. but I didn't want them to have the me too story of mm -hmm. I've been touched, mm -hmm. you know? And so, yeah, I was super overprotective, not on my watch, you mm -hmm. know, that was me, mm -hmm. but I did them a disservice because I let my fear, yeah. right? run over into their lives, spill over into their lives. And so now there was a part, I blocked them from certain freedoms. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so that's where my parents kicked in or my mom kicked in. No, you're not going. No, you're not doing. Who is that? And, mm -hmm. But I felt like 
I had to be like that because I felt like if they were or in that season, if my mom was a little bit more, mm -hmm. you know, observant and a little more in tune with what was going on, it wouldn't have happened. And so it was very important for me to make sure that, again, none of my children, male or female, because this is this can be a sick world. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't want them to have that story. So I tried to be and again, I'm not ju judging or blaming any parent um, that because you know, you got to work, you have to do your thing. However, there were plenty of things that could have been changed, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so I didn't, and so even now, people laugh because I can get on my on the phone with all of my children, we'll FaceTime, they're all adults, and we can just have a good old time, you know, for 30, 40 minutes, sometimes an hour, laughing, joking, because they have the room to be themselves, mm -hmm. but they can't be disrespectful. I don't do disrespect, mm -hmm. but let's talk about it. You know, because I wasn't able to do that and maybe I wouldn't have ended up pregnant. Oh my gosh. <laughs> hey. iPhone storage full. Again, y'all, I'm dealing with that crap. Oh, I just had to do, man. Mm, 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 it's all good. Mm, mm, mm. You know what I'm saying? This ride. I was doing so good. <laughs> and then I thought I lost the video. So I'm, I I voice message my this group chat that I have. And I was like, if y'all don't help me, I'm about to lose my shit. <laughs> Say immediately. <laughs> um, why is this video not on here? I looked in my trash. I looked here like I was like, just, where's my I stuff? I gotta upload this video tonight. Are you kidding exactly, me? Exactly, exactly. <sighs> oh, I've been, ooh. I don't envy you. No. Man, and it's <laughs> iPhone storage full, like whatever. Get on my nerves. Record. Look, right? no. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so. Yes. um. So just and the reason why I asked you about the um the forgiving part of it was um I struggle with that mm -hmm. and I didn't realize and yesterday I was at um an Equinox um event because mm -hmm. you know yesterday was the spring equinox mm -hmm. and um I had a reading. Okay. And when I had saw the lady, we've met before she was at one of my events, but I don't think I knew this what she did. Okay. And so I put my name down, then I went downstairs and I did the sound bass and um some other few things and she texted me and said she was ready. Well, as I come up there, um, she said, I didn't mean to pull the cards, but this is kind of what came out. Oh, wow. So she was like, we can go with it or we can do something else. And I was like, nope, let's go with let's it. Let's do it, yeah. And so it was about family. Mm -hmm. And one of them was a feminine card. And mm -hmm. she really tapped into my relationship with my mother. Oh, wow. And I literally was crying. Oh. Like, it was crazy because my dad passed away six years ago mm -hmm. my um and me and my mother our relationship has always been strained okay and I always felt that I was taking care of her out of obligation for my dad because that's what he would want me to do mm -hmm. so I'll do it but it was difficult right and so um Sunday was their anniversary they would have been married 58 years and mm -hmm. so my mother out of the blue wanted to have a dinner and the energy was just off to me. Mm -hmm. And my anxiety had been really high the past couple of days. Mm -hmm. And um, so for her to say that, and it just kind of made, like, it was, it just made sense that that was, that was, that reading was the way it was. Right, right. Was because she was talking about how I need to show, you know, grace to my mother i need to forgive her about we're a mirror mm -hmm. of our parents a lot of times that yeah. we don't really want to admit that mm -hmm. um and it was just really uh and so my niece had came over that night because she lives with my mom mm -hmm. and my anxiety was high like i needed to have somebody there right. and so she came over sat with me for a little <clears> bit <throat> and i was like if she's been struggling so i was like come over tomorrow i'll fix you breakfast because i'm mm -hmm. trying to get her out of her funk Mm -hmm. And so she went back and told my mom what I did. And my mom texted me, was like, oh, it's so nice that you did that. And I'm like, yeah, I'll try to get her out of her funk. And she was like, well, all of us need that. Mm -hmm. And the <laughs> lady that did the reading, she was like, how did you, what, how did that make you feel? I said, I kind of went both ways. I felt like it was a cry of help because mm -hmm. her saying, you know, I could utilize that too. Right. And then the negative side of me was, it's, you always make it about you. Mm-hmm. And so just to have those two emotions and then her telling me that I need to forgive her because if I don't or if I don't find peace, mm -hmm. it's going to make me struggle in my relationship. Right. And there are things that I struggle with decision making. Mm -hmm. And she brought that up. And I really have a because when I was younger, my decisions 
or anything I did was either questioned or they wasn't good enough or that's mm-hmm. the wrong one. And so I never trusted myself. Okay. And so for her to say that, I was just like, okay. And then I just saw, you know how when you hear stuff, you just the dots start to connect? Yeah. So that comes full circle. It does. And mm-hmm. so that's why I wanted to ask, you know, just how you was able to, you know, overcome that. Because that's a hard thing to do. Because oh, it is. In my, my, um, my subconscious mind, I'm still hurt. And it's probably my inner child. Mm-hmm. But my logical mind knows that she was only acting out by the way she was treated. Because right. my mother was abused when she was a kid. Okay. And she dealt with a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and so she, again, with us, some of that came through. Right. And so knowing that, I know it. But the inner child is like, we don't care. You still yeah, hurt me. Yeah, forget that. Yeah, like I'm still hurt. No, I mean, <laughs> listen, I, I, um, I resented my mother mm. initially. I did because, and my father. Like, don't, don't even get it twisted. Because my thing was, for my dad, you were supposed to protect me. Mm. You were supposed to show me how a man was supposed to treat a woman. Mm. You were supposed to protect me from any man hurting me. Um, for my mom, you've been hurt, so why would you leave me in that situation, mm-hmm. right? So I couldn't fathom. I'm like, but then I grew up, and I understand that hurt people hurt people. Mm-hmm. And then I became a mother, and I realized that there were no books to this. <laughs> and then I realized <laughs> there is no perfect parent. Yeah. I realized that I made some graveyard mistakes mm-hmm. as a mother. Um, and then as I did that and watched my children grow up and develop into adults, I realized that I needed to forgive my mom because there were no books. Mm. Um, and she did the best she could with what she was able to do. Now, I don't give her a pass, Mm -hmm. right? Because as a mother and not even my father, like I love them and I forgive them, but there are no passes Mm -hmm. because if you decide to have children, then decide to take care of them. Mm -hmm. Now, my dad took care of me but it was from another city and state, right? Mm-hmm. He was in Illinois, so he got me on the weekend. It wasn't like he was a deadbeat dad. That's not what I'm saying, but I wanted him in the home. Mm-hmm. When I saw my mom getting beat up, mm-hmm. I wish my dad was there. Why, why am I here? When I was being left at home at seven, eight, nine years old by myself, mm-hmm. why? Mm-hmm. You know, why am I in the corner crying for my mother? Mm-hmm. Why? Why did I have to break out of the house to go down to a neighbor's so that I can get out? And that's what it took for you to quit leaving me at home. Mm-hmm. So it's just those things. So I, I really, oh, I resented her so bad. Like At what I did. point in your life, in your journey, was you able to do that? Um, probably in my thirties. Isn't that crazy? How yeah. It takes like yeah. I tell people, thirties and forties is where it's at. <laughs> I'm telling you. When you talk about some clarity Listen. and some, like I think I got this shit, baby, almost figured out. <laughs> baby, you like you damn, can't tell me you know. <laughs> Man, if I do this back, and it's always said if I do this, but you can't because you, you have can't. to go through those experiences to, to learn become the person that, that you, you are. are. Yeah, it, it's just it's crazy. Yeah, and it's so crazy because, um, you know, I'm not the person I was at 20. Of course, I'm not the person I was at 30, 40. I'm 50 now. Well, 50, yeah, I'm 51 actually. And so it's just like, okay, but at 30, I don't know. It was like you know things were changing. Mm-hmm. Um, I was married then, you know, again, from uh, my second marriage. And so life was different for me. And I was going through with my own children. So that was a wake up call. Like, girl, you don't got it all together either. Why are you thinking you the best mom in the whole damn wide world? You're not. Your phone. So you're, yeah. So it's. <laughs> now it says it's low battery. You know what? Y'all. Is not letting me be great today. But no, seriously, it's just kind of like, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, I'm not her judge and jury. Mm -hmm. And I had to learn that because I wanted to nail her to the cross and my dad. Mm -hmm. I did. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, um, but then I started um, seeing, like I said, as a mother. And I'm like, you know what? My daughters blame me for stuff. My son, he thought I didn't like him. My youngest son. Mm. Um, my daughter has said some yeah. stuff. That I was yeah. I'm like, whoa. unavailable for her. Yeah. Hurt. I'm sure because we think we're doing everything amazing, right? Mm-hmm. But and she has no problem calling me out. Like, yeah. No, but to not, be able to hear. Yeah. It's like, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> yeah. And so it was important for me. But um, why can't, like, 
that just made me think of something. Yeah, so what? she could tell me that, but I need to tell my mother how it made me feel. Absolutely, because that's, that's one of healing. the things that she said is talk to her, but tell yeah. her how you feel, but not in a, I want to get back at you, but... This is what I yeah. experienced. Mm -hmm. um, and I did. I did that with my mom. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember when I told my mom and, you know, again, I had to forgive her. But I remember telling her that I was molested because I waited a long time to tell her. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember <sighs> telling her when I finally did as an adult. And it blew my mind because she said, well, my uncle so-and-so mm -hmm. busted my cherry. I'm like, what kind of shit is this? Mm -hmm. I just said that somebody hurt me. Mm -hmm. And that was not the response I was looking for, right? Mm -hmm. I'm looking for, oh my, oh my God. Yeah. Baby, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I wish I was there. Mm -hmm. I hate that happened. And I got none of that. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, I had to understand that she had a hurt within her that had never been resolved. Mm -hmm. And as a result, she couldn't identify with me, mm -hmm. right? Because she, it was almost like, girl, you think that's something? She, no, you know, girl, like, oh, wow. Like, yeah. that, that's all that happened. And it was like, yeah. it was so disheartening. Yeah. Um, and that's what made me push so hard to be so overprotective of my children because, mm -hmm. again, not on my watch, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I had to forgive her because of that. But then as I healed, um, I was angry at her because my little girl wasn't healed. Mm -hmm. That little girl that I just talked about being in the corner crying, you know, mm -hmm. the little girl that wished her dad was there, the little girl that was pregnant at 13, a Barbie doll here mm -hmm. and a baby here. Mm -hmm. Very confused. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm 13, mm -hmm. literally. Mm -hmm. um, so all of the things, but we got past it. And once I started to heal, and I'm like, you know what? You're not the little girl anymore. Nobody's molesting you. Nobody's beating on you. Nobody's, you don't live there anymore. You survived it. Mm -hmm. And you are not a victim. Mm -hmm. That was the biggest thing, uh, breaking the victim mentality because- That's a huge mind shift. Yeah, because as long as you are a victim, there's always someone else responsible. Mm -hmm. So you got to break the victim mentality, even if it was somebody else's fault. Yeah. You have to decide that what that man did to me as a child was not my fault. That was a sickness mm -hmm. within him. However, I'm 51. Do I then still say, mm -hmm. well, you know, I was molested when I was. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. And I'm not discrediting anyone that has gone through that because I am someone that has experienced that. Yeah. What I am saying is we don't have to be a victim of our circumstances. You don't have to stay there because it happened, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was hard. Yeah. It was very hard. Well, I appreciate hard. you sharing that. And I don't even know where all, why is my reading <laughs> yesterday is where that came from. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, I always, this is why I like organic conversations. Cause yeah. you just never know how it's going to be directed and you don't know what was said that could have impact, that can impact somebody. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's deep. I mean, and then imagine the effect that has, like it was already just a shitty situation being a kid going through it. Mm -hmm. But then to be able to process those things and be an adult and think, okay, now I'm going to get some sort of resolution, some sort of resolve. Mm -hmm. And so let me tell my mom, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're closer now. And I'm like, what? The heck? What did you just, you know? Right, right. But again, still understanding that there was some healing that needed to be done within me. And so yeah. I, I did that. Mm -hmm. um, and now, like I said, because people are who they are. Yeah. And you got to be okay with that. And you got to leave them where they're you at. You have to. Yeah. You have to be okay. So because I, it does affect, like me, it yeah. affects my decision making. Yeah. And me trusting myself to make the right decision. So even to get into another relationship. Yeah. It scares me more now because I've been married twice. Mm -hmm, and too. those were... Mm, they was what they was. Right. You know, for that, that, that was an experience. And just now, <laughs> I'm because I have healed. What because I said <laughs> because Maybe. I have healed. Mm -hmm. I want to do it different. I want to be different because right. I'm more aware. Yeah. But I still realize that I don't trust myself. So mm -hmm. it's like as we grow and learn and heal, there are going to be still aspects of our mm -hmm. healing that we might have to go back and tweak a little bit. Yeah. But we may not know until we're confronted with it. I think healing. I think. 
The healing is a forever journey. I was going to say, I don't think you ever healed. That <laughs> word healed is not even. I don't even know. Doesn't like, even exist. Maybe my cut healed. Right. right. <laughs> I still might have a little, you little might, scar, right. but I can heal it closed. Yeah. But healing is a forever journey because yeah, you always that. are touching. And I mean, touching something that makes you grow, mm -hmm. you're always going to have something that makes you hurt. It's unfortunate, but it happens. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always going to be death. There's always going to be something that you have to learn from. So for me, like um, even going through my divorce recently, um, last year, it'll be a year. Eh? <laughs> um, hey, listen, it is what it is. It was what it was. And I don't bash him or anything mm -hmm. like that. We had what we had. We raised children together, mm -hmm. you know, and it was amazing during the time that it was amazing. Yeah. Right. And so you it keep it moving. It served its purpose. <laughs> Boom. And so we move on. And yeah. so, um, and, and no disrespect to that person or anything like that, but it's like when you get to a season of healing, mm -hmm. you're no longer to, uh, willing to go back to the places that hurt you. Absolutely. Right? So I can love you so much, but if you're my abuser in any facet, whether it's mental, physical, whatever, I'm going to leave you over there. I'm at that season in my life where I'm okay as much as I love, and I love hard, mm -hmm. but I also walk away harder, mm -hmm. right? Because by the time probably I've given you everything that I have in me, um, so when it's time for me to walk away, yeah, it's a right? wrap. It's a there wrap. is no let's talk about. There's nothing to talk about. I try to talk. I try yeah. to. So just understanding that. Healing is a forever journey mm -hmm. and not getting so caught up. And when you do have a setback either, mm -hmm. right? Be gracious to yourself. Mm -hmm. You give all in men, you date. I'm just, I'm not talking about, I'm just no, talking about I, sisters that girl. give all these brothers. You get his brother 20 chances, but you won't give yourself one. Yeah. It's so he bad cheated bad. on you. He gave you STD, whatever, whatever. Not because he loved me. You know, he under a lot. Okay. Well, you know, Jennifer, you know, you. <laughs> Girl, I just can't do it. And it's like, how, why do we do that? I know. It's so like, <laughs> oh, my God. That's some deep-rooted shit right it there. It is. It's too damn deep. Like, like, it's like, it down. You know what I'm We saying. have to have a whole exorcism, <laughs> a whole, I don't even know what it would take. But and that's, a, I don't know if it's a cultural thing or just, yeah, that, 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 that's <laughs> sick. No, right? Seriously. Deep. Like, it just, and it's across the board. We do it, though. Yeah. There is, I don't care what culture you are, like, so it's not a cultural thing. Let me no, rewind that. It's yeah. across the board. A woman and what in our DNA makes us feel that we cannot give ourselves that same grace. You know, I think it's because the, like you, you would tell a friend, are you kidding me? Like we can yeah, tell well, other exactly. person. Listen, even when I was going through my divorce, my cousin, we were on the phone. And we were just talking and I'm going on and on because I don't share with too many people. Mm -hmm. Not too many people get in. But those few that I let in, right? And so I let her in and she just simply looked at me and she asked me, she said, what would you tell your daughters? And I'm like, boom, mm -hmm. <laughs> get the hell out of there, right? Mm -hmm. That's what I would tell my daughters. But a lot of times it's easier when you're on the outside looking in to give the advice. Mm -hmm. But when you're actually in it, mm -hmm. right? I don't know, I needed healing until I got out of the relationship. Mm -hmm. Right, because, and then I'm going to speak from a cultural perspective, being African American, I wanted to be the one to make it work. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. I want to be different. I'm, I'm, you know, my mother my and father got a divorce. Change, Look, I'm going to mold him <laughs> over. He's going to be great, you know? And no, ma'am. Until you grow up and say, you can't change nobody. You can't change. Not. Girl, I barely do good with getting me together, right? <laughs> And then I want to take another whole human being, yeah. but those are life's lessons, like mm -hmm. you said, yeah. um, and just understanding. But when you find out that that person isn't for you, don't try to make them be, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's what I did in the marriage even, you know, oh, yeah. just wanted to fight for something that was long over mm -hmm. because um, society, yeah. another broken marriage, another broken, yeah. you know. And I so. grew up in a, you know, parents were married for 50 some years. Like, yeah. Get divorced. Yeah. You know, and like so. I said, we were married 19 together, yeah. 26. I'm like, oh, we going to, we, we mm -hmm. dug in this out. Mm -hmm. Not. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, absolutely. Well, yeah. I appreciate you being on. Thank um, you. Can you tell the people where they can follow you and find you? Absolutely. So I am on all 
platforms. But um, so my podcast is Verbal Mirrors Reflecting Understanding. And I have, um, I am on Facebook. I am also on iHeart. I am on Podbean. I am on Samsung. I am on uh, Amazon Music. So I'm on a lot of platforms. You can reach me. My email address is verbalmirrorspodcast at gmail.com. You can reach me there if you're interested, if you have a story to tell. Um, and then my non I mean, my for profit, maybe I need to switch it to non for profit. I keep saying that. Yeah, know. a couple times. But um, my for profit organization is I Can and I Will Women's Empowerment. So, yeah. All right, perfect. Well, this has been Our Generation with Melissa Shaw, where we educate, empower, and inspire. And I hope that you got some education and empowerment and inspiration so that you can go out and be a light in the world. We are out. And thanks for dealing with the, the phone and the phone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>